Hello! Welcome back to Manium Books. My name is Alex and today I will be doing my August wrap-up. In the month of August, I managed to read eight books. I was trying to fulfill all my prompts for the magical readathon that's hosted by G at Book Roasts. I technically finished all my classes. I may have sort of twisted some of them to work, but it ended up fine in the end. There is one book that I started in August. I read like 90% of it in August and then I finished it in September, but I'm counting it towards my August TBR because that's when I read majority of it. I had a lot of really great books this month actually in August. I found a couple new favorites, which is exciting. So it was a good reading month overall. I don't think there was a single book that I did not enjoy at least a little bit. So the first book that I read in the month of August was The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. Oh. This is very, the best way to describe it is if you have seen Spirited Away, this very much is a Spirited Away type vibe of a story. So in this book, we follow our main character, Mina. And in the town that she's from, every year a girl or a maiden is sacrificed to the sea god in the hopes of one day finding his true love or his true maiden, the one who's going to marry the sea god. Because over the years, the town has not had such great of luck and they are trying to please the sea god by trying to find his bride. So at the start of our book, Mina, jumps in and sacrifices herself in place of her brother's girlfriend. She goes beneath the sea and she ends up in the spirit world where her goal is to wake up and save the sea god. So it very much reminded me of Spirited Away, which is one of my favorite movies. It was so adorable. I actually had happy tears while reading this, so it was such a good read. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it because usually shorter standalones, I can't connect to them as much as I would like a full series. But this one, I fell in love with the characters so quickly. And there's a moment near the end where we find out who some of these characters are. And I, I cried. I was so emotional. I absolutely love this. It just gave me so many happy feels. So if you're looking for like a really happy read that is easy to read, this is this was an amazing book. It was five out of five. This is a new favorite. And then continuing on this good luck train, the next book I read in the month of August was Electra by Jennifer Saint. This is a retelling of three women who were involved in the Trojan War. So we follow Clytemnestra, who was the wife of Agamemnon, who kind of led the Greeks to Troy, we follow Electra, who is Clytemnestra and Agamemnon's daughter. And then we also follow Cassandra, who was a princess of Troy. And if you know anything about the story, you know that Cassandra has been cursed to have these visions of the future, but no one will ever believe her. So she kind of has gone mad in a way because she knows what's going to happen to Troy, but no one believes her. So this is the story of these three women. We switch between all of their different perspectives. I love any story that's from the point of view of Cassandra. I love reading about her character. Clytemnestra, I really enjoyed as well. Electra's side was interesting, but I just found her really annoying. I understand that she was going through a lot with her father leaving to war when she was quite young and she never really got to know him and her mother has changed a lot since Agamemnon, I don't wanna, if you don't know what it is, I don't wanna spoil it. And even though I know the story is so old that at this point it's not even really spoiling, but Clytemnestra has changed a lot since Agamemnon did this horrific deed before he left to Troy. And Electra is kind of dealing with her mother being distant from her and her siblings because of what Agamemnon did. So it was interesting to read from her perspective, but she was definitely my least favorite perspective in the story. I definitely preferred to read 
about Cassandra and Clytemnestra, but if you like retellings, it was a very good retelling. This is the same author who did Ariadne, which I have not read yet, but I am hoping to read somewhat soon. Who knows? I would like to read it soon. But yeah, another really good read. And then next we change paces a little bit and I actually read Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. So this is quite an old classic. This was this was published in 1726, so it's been around for a while. As far as classics go, I actually enjoyed reading this book, except for the last section wasn't my favorite. So in this book, it's split into four parts. In each part, Gulliver travels to some different weird land. So it's very... There's a lot of repetition in this book, basically. Gulliver sets off on a voyage, he gets shipwrecked, he lands on some weird island, and the people there are very strange. He gets to learn their customs and their ways, and then eventually he leaves and goes back home, and then it starts all over again. I honestly just feel bad for his wife and kids, because he'll be home for about a month at most. And then just like, yeah, bye, I want to go travel again, and then it all happens again. So I really enjoyed the first two parts particularly. And then part three was pretty good. Part four, I just, it wasn't my favorite. And then the ending was just, I, I did not like how Gulliver treated his family at the end of this book. Like I understand how, I understand what happened, but I didn't, I didn't like how he changed. It was a weird ending. Then Swift wrote this as like a commentary and on a lot of like political issues that were happening in this time. So I'm very, very happy that this book or this edition had a lot of footnotes explaining what some of these references were or what Jonathan Swift meant by some of the things he says, because I would never have understood that some of the things he says were like a dig at certain people in that time frame or like a dig at politics or anything like that. So. So if you are planning on read this, make sure you find an edition that has really good footnotes because otherwise you will have no idea about all these little references in this book. But it was actually a really good classic. I find it hard to rate classics. Like I think I only gave it like a three because it did drag on, but based on some of the other classics I've read, I did enjoy this one more. The next thing I read in the month of August was The Bone Shard Emperor by Andrea Stewart. This is the second book in the Bone Shard series. It's the sequel to The Bone Shard Daughter, which I picked up not too long ago, actually. This is slowly, not slowly, this is quickly, this is quickly becoming a new favorite series. The first book dragged on a little bit at the start, but I think that's just because there was a lot of information being thrown at us, like explaining the magic system, explaining all these different characters and all of that. So it was hard to get through the first, like 90 pages of the first book. I just, I just keep looking at, I just keep looking at Venom back there. He's just chilling. But once we got past the info dump, the first book, I loved it. I was very much invested. So I was very excited to pick up the second book so soon, even though now I have to wait for book three, which I don't even know when book three is being released. I hope it's soon because I am just falling in love with the series. But if you don't know what the series is about, in the series we follow, in this series we follow our main character, Lynn, and she is the daughter of the emperor. And she is trying to teach herself the bone shard magic that her father knows. So the, what, the bone shard, what the bone shard magic is, is they take a piece of bone from behind someone's ear and they can use it to create these constructs. And these constructs are creatures that the whoever makes them has power over them. And the king has been used, or the emperor has been using them to basically help him rule his kingdom. And in the past couple of years, he's become obsessed with this bone shard magic and learning more about it. And he essentially just hasn't been taking care of his kingdom. 
And now all of a sudden, all these weird natural disasters are starting to happen. These islands are, earthquakes are, these islands are actually sinking below the sea and he doesn't seem to care. And so Lynn is trying to learn this magic and learn her father's secrets so she can take her place as emperor. And then we also follow our other character, Jovis, or Jovis, I never know how to pronounce that. And he is trying to find his wife who was kidnapped basically in the middle of the night. He is trying to find her, but instead he gets kind of caught up in the rebellion who's trying to fight against the emperor. But I am, I love this series. I'm very worried about where book three is going to go. I just feel like I'm gonna get my heart broken and I'm not really ready for that. So yeah, if you want like high fantasy, complicated magic system and world building, this is a really good series to check out. The next two books I read, I don't have physical copies of. The first one, I listened to the audiobook of it. And then the other one, I read the ebook by Kobo. So the audiobook I listened to this month was Where the Crawdads Sing. I don't even remember who's by. Which obviously was kind of huge all over. It was kind of huge with book talk and booktube, I guess last year was when it blew up but the movie just came out recently i wasn't planning on reading it but then my mom went to the movie with a bunch of her friends and she said that they just loved it and she really thought i should read it and i just kind of wanted to know what all the hype was about so i ended up listening to the audiobook i did really enjoy it it's essentially like if you have read to kill a mockingbird it gives a very similar vibe to that book. So in the book we follow our main character Kaya and we actually have two separate timelines in this story. So the first timeline being Kaya growing up living in the marsh. In the first timeline we follow Kaya growing up in the marsh in North Carolina and she lives in like this hut and when she's quite young her mother leaves and all of her siblings leave her as well and her dad is kind of in and out of her life so she essentially raises herself. She doesn't want to get taken in by social services. So she is hiding from them and trying to take care of herself. And she finds a way to find herself food and get some money. And that's our first timeline. And then the second timeline is quite a few years later when Kaya is around 19. And the star quarterback of their town, what's it called? The star quarterback of their town, Barclay Cove, has been found dead and it is expected, it is suspected that he was murdered and a lot of the clues are pointing towards Kaya. I could see it becoming like a class, I could see it becoming like a modern classic because it is very well written. I know there's a lot of controversy around the author, so you could try and pick it up secondhand if you wanted to, if you're interested in it. But yeah, it was actually a really interesting read. I enjoyed it. The audiobook is really well done. And then the book that I read on my Kobo this month was Asper Fell by Jamie Thomas. So picture up here. This was an interesting book. I wasn't sure what to expect when going into this. It was free on Kobo Plus. So I thought I'd try it out. It fit one of my prompts for... August where I had to read a book with one single item on the cover and you can see on the cover it just has that one big tree. So I decided to pick it up. I wasn't sure what to expect. It was not what I was expecting at all but it was really interesting actually. In this story we follow our main character Brioni. Brioni? I think it's Brioni. And she has grown up inside the palace where she lives. Her father is like an advisor to the king. But at the start of the story, the king is murdered by, everyone assumes, his son. And his son is exiled to this world called Asperthel. So in this world, there is this like portal to this place called Asperthel that was built by wizards a long time ago. And it is where they send all of the like criminal wizards. Obviously, they can't be held in like a regular jail. So they are sent to Asperthel for the rest of their lives. They have no way of getting back. So she's sent there, she grows up there. And then when she is older, a 
bunch of different events happen, but essentially she has to go into Asperfell and try and rescue or try to bring back the prince from Asperfell, which has never been done. As far as everyone knows, there's no way to get back from Asperfell, but she is sent there to try and bring back the prince because the now king, the younger brother, has turned into like a tyrant. So that is what that book is about. I feel like that explanation was really weird. It was a very weird book. It was very like whimsical and nonsensical in some ways. I think the next book comes out soon. There's at least two books in the series and the second one should be released right away. If you like more like nonsensical type fantasy stories, this might be a good one to try. All right, book number seven of the month of August. I continued with another series and I read Soul of the Sword by Julie Kagawa. This is the second book in the Shadow of the Fox series by her. So again, in this series, we follow our main character Yumiko and she is a kitsune, which if you don't know what kitsune is, they are from Jap they are from Japanese mythology. They can transform into a fox and then they have different magical powers and they're very much associated as being like a trickster. So Yumiko grew up in this monastery. Monastery, is that the right word? Or temple? She grew up with these monks and was always taught how to control the Yum the always taught how to control the Kitsune side and told that it's bad. It's a bad type of magic and she shouldn't use it. And then when she's older, these demons come and attack the temple and kill all of the monks. And the reason for this is they are looking for this ancient magical scroll that if you connect all the parts of the scroll, they lead you to this dragon god-like creature who will grant you a wish. So Yumiko is the only survivor of this attack and she takes the scroll and is trying to travel to this temple where it is believed, I, it is believed the other parts of the scroll are being hidden and she knows she will be safe there and that they will know how to help her. But then as she's traveling there, she runs into the Tatsumi who is an assassin from the Shadow Clan. And his job is to find this scroll and bring it back to his clan. So he comes across Yumiko and he doesn't realize that she has the scroll. She tells him that she's traveling to this temple to find the scroll. That's where she's been told it is. So they team up and are helping each other there, but he does not realize that she has the scroll the entire time. So that's what the first book is kind of about. And in this book, we continue on on their journey after a bunch of very big bad things happen in the first book. The series isn't like the most amazing series I've ever read. I really enjoy it, but it's more of like a like a four out of five stars. It's good, but it's not like the most amazing thing I've ever read. And lastly, the eighth book I read in the month of August. This is the one that I read most of in August and then just finished up the last, I think, 100 pages in September. So I'm counting it towards August. And that was King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. This is the last series she has in her Shadow and Bone world that she's been writing about. The first series being Shadow and Bone, and then we have Six of Crows, and now King of Scars. So in King of Scars, we follow characters from both of the first two series. We follow Nikolai, Zoya, and Nina. And again, this book is hard to talk about unless you've read Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows because the plot of this kind of spoils those other two series. So Nikolai and Zoya are from the Shadow and Bone series and then Nina being from Six of Crows and they have all kind of come together. I was very excited for this book because Nikolai was one of my favorite characters from Shadow and Bone and then the Six of Crows series I love all of the characters so I would have been fine with any of them. The actual plot line in this book it's interesting but what really carries this 
series is the characters. It was the same for Shadow and Bone. It was the same for Six of Crows. The plot line is interesting, but it's the characters that makes me really love these books. So in this book, we deal with a lot of trauma from the events of what happened in the other two series, which again, I cannot explain because I would spoil them. But the character, each of the three characters are dealing with their own trauma from what happened in their series and trying to deal with that and move forward and build like a better kingdom for its citizens. So yes, if you enjoyed Shadow and Bone and Six Crows and you have not picked up the series yet, you need to, but do not pick up the series until you have read those other two because major spoilers in this book, obviously. So here we have it. Ooh, that one's falling all over the place. My August wrap up plus Asperfell and Where the Crawdads Sing. This is more books than I usually read in a month. Well, not usually. Eight was my norm last year, but this year I've definitely been slower with my reading. I've been reading about six a month. So finishing eight is definitely a better month for me. I just had a lot of time August was honestly a pretty boring month for me. I didn't do much over this summer. And so I had a lot of free time to read. Plus in the summer, I just love sitting outside and reading. So I do get more reading time in. So yeah, there we have my August wrap up. If you've read any of these and you wanna rant about them in comments, please do. Or if you're interested in them and you wanna just learn more about them, ask away as always my my bookstagram as always my bookstagram and my goodreads links are in the description so go ahead and follow me and we can talk about books even more i love to rant about all the things we're reading and meet meet more bookish friends and yeah thank you for watching and i will see you again soon bye